display. Um, I'll try not to blind anybody with the light. If you have a question, I'm gonna have my head here because I promised Christian I would try and stay in this little area right here. Um, so please feel free to holler it out, okay? Because I'm not gonna be looking at y'all too much, okay? Um, one of the things that, Christian, I'm gonna turn the light on for you. Um, in my eyes, pyrography is two different things. You can draw with pyrography or you can brand or burn, burn really hard, which is like a branding. To me, this is what you get when you are drawing with pyrography. I drew the birds, I drew the leaves, and to me that's actually using pyrography just as a different form of artwork. It's like pen and ink or charcoal, but you can see how much detail you can get on it. And that's just drawing. That's really all that is, is I just drew, but I used heat to draw instead of ink. The other thing you can do is you can do what I call more of a branding. And um, Molly Winter does a lot of this. Um, Sue Williams does more of the drawing. You get people like Molly and um, Dixie who will use the burning um, and the branding where they get, actually get flames and they make it so dark. Um, it's really nice. Avelino Samuel, Samuel, Samuels also does it um, where he will burn almost a whole piece and just leave one stripe of cherry so you get just that pop of cherry. But um, to me, there's two different things you can do with pyrography and one falls into the drawing area and the other one falls into the um, branding area. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both just to give you um, an appearance of how I do it. Um, there's no right way, no wrong way. Um, everybody has their own little style, so hopefully you'll pick up a few tips. Um, and Frank, did the handout get handed out? Did Frank leave? He ran away. See, he didn't really want me to come here. Um, a few safety things I want to talk about. Um, never, ever, ever like you see those little boxes over there, never burn on anything that already has finish on it. It's gonna off gas, you don't know what that finish is, especially if you bought it in a store. Um, so there's gonna be fumes coming off of there and you really don't know whether they're gonna be good for you, bad for you, or kill you. So never ever buy anything at TJ Maxx or wherever and then go, oh, well this will look really, really good. There you are, Frank. This will look really good if I take and I add some of my own style to it, okay? You'd have to strip the finish off when you do it. If your husband has burned something or turned something and you, the wife wants to burn it, make sure he doesn't put finish on it. Then you do your burning and then give it back to him to put finish on. Um, I work in my shop. I have a little fan that pulls the smoke away from me. I want to keep the lungs that I have the, my whole life in the shape that they're in. Um, so I, I actually have it so that it pulls that away. Um, take and make sure that you turn your unit off, disable it whenever you are walking away. Lots of times I will unplug my pen um, or I will take, you can turn it off manually here, I'll unplug the cord or in my case at my actual workbench, I have a switch that my husband installed that I flip it off and it kills the strip that all the pyrography stuff is plugged into. That way I don't have to worry about coming home and not finding my shop. Okay, so that's just some of the things. There are different types of pens. Um, some of them will hurt you. Besides the heat factor, this pen is askew and it's actually sharp enough that it'll cut your skin. Um, so don't draw on yourself, even with it off, to see if it's clean or anything, because you can cut yourself with it, so be careful of that. And the last thing I'll talk about is ergonomics. Um, when you're sitting at your bench, if you are hunched over, if your chair is too short or too tall and you're not comfortable or your arms are way up here or way down here, you're not going to be able to sit there for eight or ten hours and do what you want to do best. You're going to get uncomfortable, you're going to say, I don't want to do this, I don't like doing this, and you're going to turn around and walk away. So I highly urge you to stop and look at your working space and see if that works for you. I have an office chair, I have a a table that's a little bit lower than this so my arms are at a 90 degree angle and I sit there eight and nine hours and my husband has to say come on time for dinner let's go so make sure you're comfortable okay um, with this one of the first steps you do is you make you decide on your design in this case I did a little bird and flower um, he's here on the front side he's all done he's all shaded in 
on the back side, we're going to go through what the steps are that, that got me to the point that it's an actual finished piece. I take and I get a lot of my clip art. Um, if, I, if it's something that I don't draw myself, I get clip off off the internet. They have books that are clip art. Um, please make sure that it's copy free so that you're not stealing somebody else's work. If you're going to turn it just for yourself and you want to pay homage to that person, please do. But don't sell somebody else's artwork. It's just not a good thing to do. So I always try to make sure that I have stuff that's free because I don't want to make any money on somebody else's work. Um, so I take and I'll redesign it, I'll change it, I'll draw it by hand, whatever the case may be. Once I do that, I use graphite paper to transfer the design onto this. Graphite paper comes from Michael's, you can get it at Amazon. It's black. You can get white if you're working on a dark wood, which you typically don't burn on too dark of a wood. But you can take and you can get it. You tear off a little piece of it. You don't want the piece to be oversized. If it's oversized, all you're going to do is smear it everywhere that you don't want it to be. Um, the stuff is cheap as chips, and you can reuse it over and over and over and over again. So you'll get a piece that you'll see six, seven, eight, ten different designs on. So don't just use it once and throw it away unless you have money to burn, and then, you know, go ahead. One of the other things you can do to get a design is stencils. Again, Michaels, Joann's, whoever, they have these stencils that you could trace these as part of your design on your wood, and then you're just going to burn within the traces. And they make all kinds of these ribbons and Celtic designs and, you know, fish, whatever you want to be, you can find it. And it's an easy way, if you are not artistic, to sit there and put art into your work. Okay? So once I take the design, I take and I put, I tape it in place. You'll see that my paper is very close to where my outline, where my drawing is. I do that because I don't want to have any more paper than necessary. I want to be able to line up my design. If I had too much white paper around, I wouldn't be able to tell where this line and this line were, so I might not end up centered. It might end up cockeyed one way or the other. So I do this so that I can stay where I want it to be. Tape it down, and then I take a pencil. I usually use a pencil. But you can also, if you have a easy design that you want to reuse and reuse, they make things called stencils or styluses. Um, you'll find them with the stencils. They have balls on the end. And it doesn't draw on your artwork, but it does go through and it transfers the graphite lines to your artwork. Um, caveat to this is if you have a very complicated design, you can easily lose your place and not get all the lines that you think you did. When I do a design, I also don't draw every single line that's on it. I'll take and I'll draw the outside of this leaf, but I don't draw all these leaves on the inside. Okay, I, I can figure out what I want there. So I pretty much don't do a lot of it, and I come back and I do that as I'm burning. Does that make sense? So once I do it, I'm going to peel it off. And you end up with this end over here is what it'll look like. I don't know how well that shows up with the light, but this is basically, it's like a pencil. So I do this first. So I'm going to show you how I do all these lines and fill this out. I've cheated and gotten to the point that I can show you that this right here, this is what it's going to look like when I'm done drawing the lines. And this is what it looks like once you start putting some shading into it. So you can see how it becomes more three-dimensional as you're going through. It doesn't take long for, yes, sir. The burner, the burn, the good question. Um, the burners that I use, I go with the razor tip. Um, I have had the opportunity to use a lot of different ones. I used a coal wood, I used a burn master, um, I used the razor tip, and I got to use a detail master, I believe it's called, and all of them were good. The only thing I can caution is that get something that fits your hand. The burn master, a lot of people love it, but as small as my hand is, I got wicked cramps 
within very short order. It's got a very big handle on it. So I was hold, fighting to hold on to it and feel like I had control. Um, pyrography tools, um, and everybody sells them, I think, just about now. I don't even remember where. I got, I got my first unit, and the units, for the most part, all of them will come singles, they'll come doubles. Everybody has um, removable pens, so in some instances, I can even take a cold wood pen and they make an adapter that goes in here and I can take and put use that pen on mine or an Optima pen. So they make them interchangeable. So you could actually buy one company's pen and put it on um, most other burners. But play with it if you can. I highly recommend it, especially you know if you're gonna buy one. Michaels wouldn't have them, I don't believe. Um, Woodcraft has them. Uh, Amazon sells them. Um, most any woodworking um, website would have them. Also, if you do go to a local craft, sh um, a, a uh, wood carving show, they'll sell them there. That's where I got my first one at, down in Punta Gorda. So, and they're easy. And you can buy it direct. Razor tip itself comes from a company in Canada. Um, I. Right, that's what I have, and I like it. It um, it's very, it has dual adjustments, which the Burn Master does too. It comes in two ways. It has a single pen, it has a double pen, two different units, so I can just leave two pens hooked up all the time if I'm going back and forth between two pens. Um, I tend to start with a tip, and I stay with that tip until I get everything done that uses that tip. The pen's already hot. I've already got the temperature where I want it to be. I just go through and I'll do everything that uses a skew if that's what I have. Then I'll change it.